Hi, I'm Paul Talbot. I've been working with reef aquariums all of my life, and I'm really excited to introduce you to the world's first plug-and-play reef aquarium, the Red Sea Max. The colourful and diverse underwater world has captivated man for ages, and since the early years, aquatic hobbyists have focused on the equipment and technology required to achieve this. Red Sea developed the Max to provide a complete reef-ready system, so from the very start, you can focus on the aquarium's inhabitants rather than the hardware. This DVD covers important aspects of Max ownership and maintenance, including salt water and substrate preparation, live rock curing, livestock selection, and long-term reef care. While there are many different ways to set up and maintain a successful marine aquarium, on this DVD I'm going to show you the ways that have proven most successful for the Red Sea Max specifically. If you follow the advice and recommendations given on this DVD, I know that you'll enjoy your Red Sea Max. The Red Sea Max approach to the coral reef experience is to replicate the natural environment as faithfully as possible. In the ocean, coral reefs flourish where specific conditions prevail, such as sufficient light, adequate current, stable temperature and clear water. The Red Sea Max provides a system that recreates these conditions, allowing you to keep a thriving healthy reef aquarium in your home. Let's take a look at some of the special features of the Max, which makes caring for coral so easy. The Max has three optional hood openings. The front part for easy access. The filter and skimmer opening. Then the main hood for easy maintenance. The Max also has a unique plug power center, which enables the aquarium to be powered through a single cord, so there's no messy cables. They are neatly tucked away in a splash-proof power center. Each component can be turned off and on from the external control panel. The splash-proof control panel is convenient and safe. Throughout this presentation, we show a wide range of livestock that demonstrates the versatility of the Max. Many of the species shown have very specific nutritional and environmental requirements that can only be maintained by an experienced aquarist. Due to the varying shapes and sizes, it is difficult to quantify the maximum number of fish that can be kept in the Max. However, as a rule of thumb, the combined linear length of the fish should be limited to 35 centimeters or 14 inches. Always get advice from a knowledgeable source before selecting the livestock for your personal max. Light is the primary energy source of a coral reef ecosystem. Invertebrates such as corals and anemones rely on light to promote photosynthesis. These photosynthetic invertebrates harbour symbiotic algae called zooanthellae. The spectrum of light is very important for coral. The intensity of the light is also important. Though it's impractical in a home aquarium to provide the high light intensity present in natural reefs. As a general rule, the light intensity of one watt per litre is sufficient for marine invertebrates. As with most other organisms, fish and invertebrates require both light and dark periods for healthy biological functioning. The photo periods needed for photosynthesis is 10 to 12 hours. The Red Sea Max features a complete reef spec lighting system, including two 55 watt T5 power compact fluorescent bulbs with high polished textured aluminium reflector. 
This provides a total of 110 watts of light, which is adequate to support a healthy reef environment in the max. Half of this light has a colour temperature of 10,000 Kelvin, which imitates sunlight in shallow water. The other half is actinic light, with a frequency of 420 nanometers, which imitates the bluer light of deeper levels. Together, they enhance the growth and health of even delicate stony corals and help recreate the magnificent fluorescent colors of the reef invertebrates. The Red Sea Max comes with a built-in 24-hour light timer to ensure a consistent photo period that replicates daylight hours with LED moonlights to replicate night conditions to complete the natural environment. Water movement is another really important factor in reef aquaria. The role of currents in transporting nutrients and oxygen makes them critical to static coral reef species. Good water flow increases the amount of food available to corals and improves the ability of the corals to metabolise this food. It also promotes gas exchange and promotes enzyme action, respiration, calcification and photosynthesis all of which are critical processes to coral development. Sufficient water movement also helps to maintain proper water parameters. Turbulence breaks the surface of the water and allows gas exchange, which oxygenates and removes carbon dioxide. It also prevents the accumulation of biofilm. Good water currents also help to eliminate stagnant areas where decomposing organic matter would otherwise build up. The Red Sea Max features two 550 litre per hour or 145 gallon per hour pumps. This is enough to circulate the water in the aquarium 10 times an hour, which is adequate for most species you'll be keeping in the Max. The adjustable directional outlets create enough water movement and flow to reach your invertebrates regardless of where you position them in the aquarium, allowing you to create any aquascaping layout. It's really, really important that your surface is agitated all the time because that's what allows the gas exchange. When the surface is flat, it forms a laminar layer which stops this gas exchange. Then if gas isn't exchanging in the aquarium, life is not possible in the aquarium. The filtration system is made up of a number of elements, each performing complementary tasks. The Red Sea Max features a four-stage reef filtration system driven by two 550 litre per hour submersible pumps, enough to circulate the entire volume of the tank 10 times per hour. It's designed to prevent clogging and the build-up of organics, maintaining the ideal water quality for a reef aquarium. The system is comprised of mechanical filtration, protein skimmer, carbon, and biological media. Mechanical filtration removes the large organic substances, such as plant matter, excess food, and sediment from the water. The mechanical filtration media in the MAX consists of a two-stage sponge that traps both coarse and fine particles. The sponges are located at the inlet of the filtration chamber for easy access. The heart of the Max Reef filtration system is a protein skimmer which injects a stream of superfine air bubbles into the water, creating a thick, dry and stable foam of waste matter. The Max skimmer filters the entire water volume of the tank nearly four times an hour. The biological media 
consists of highly porous ceramic rings, which allows a large surface area for bacterial colonization. Some particles, known as dissolved organic carbons, are too small to be picked up by the protein skimmer, causing a buildup in the water, giving it the yellowish color. This is where the chemical filtration becomes important. The activated carbon in the MAX filter essentially acts as a large chemical sponge, absorbing these impurities out of the water. The activated carbon is made from highly porous phosphate-free charcoal. One bag removes any organic dissolved substances for at least two months, depending on your aquarium bioload. The first thing you need to do when setting up your max is to choose a suitable location. Once filled with substrate, rock and water, the aquarium is practically impossible to move. The aquarium weighs about 200 kilograms or 440 pounds when filled with water, reef base or live rock. When choosing the location, make sure you have enough room to raise the main light hood and remove the skimmer collection cup for regular cleaning. Also ensure you can reach the power center switches located along the rear right edge of the max and that the power center can easily be removed from its niche. It's also important to choose a location with stable temperature. Aim to keep the ambient room temperature a comfortable and stable 22 degrees or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid placing the max in front of an air conditioning unit below heating vents or in direct sunlight. Reef inhabitants are used to very stable temperature conditions. If you live in a warmer climate or where the ambient temperature is above the maximum recommended, you might need to add a cooling fan or chiller to the system. A well ventilated room with moderate light is the best position for the aquarium. And if you plan to use a water chiller, Ensure there's at least 10 centimetres or 4 inches of clearance behind the max to allow sufficient airflow circulation. You've probably heard the term salinity used in the context of a saltwater aquarium. Salinity is a measure of the total quantity of dissolved minerals and salts in the water. We express the salinity in parts per thousand, or grams per litre. The average salinity of the ocean is about 35 parts per thousand. Specific gravity, or SG for short, is defined as the ratio of the density of the liquid in question to the density of pure water. In the marine aquarium, we want to keep a specific gravity within the ranges of 1.022 and 1.028. We use a hydrometer to measure the specific gravity. Try your best to avoid using regular tap water in your max. It contains nitrate, phosphate and silicates which noxious algae love. I strongly recommend using reverse osmosis, commonly referred to as RO water, or distilled water to fill up and top up your aquarium. The Red Sea Max includes all of the equipment you need. However, there are still a number of essential elements, such as salt, substrate, test kits, and supplements that are required to set up your aquarium. All of these items, plus others, are provided 
in the Red Sea Max Starter Kit. The Red Sea Max Starter Kit includes Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. Based on the natural salt harvested from the Red Sea, Coral Pro is formulated specifically for reef aquaria. It is enriched with refined minerals to replicate natural seawater, but is higher in calcium levels, balanced alkalinity, and balanced pH. Once you've assembled your Max, the first thing you've got to do is inspect it for leaks and make sure that no damage occurred to the tank during transport. To do this, fill the tank to the bottom of the inner rim with fresh water. Wait for 15 minutes and inspect it for any signs of leakage. Siphon the water from the tank to empty it. Remember, do not try to move the aquarium with any water inside. When you finish checking the Max for leaks, and have decided on the final location for it in your home, you can start getting your hands wet. We've prepared a quick reference setup chart, which you can download from the Max Mini site, redcmax.com, under the support section. The first stage of preparation is to fill the aquarium with water and add the salt mix. We start by filling the aquarium until the water in the aquarium reaches the underside of the inside plastic border of the max. This is to make sure the pumps will be fully submerged. Now add about four and a half kilograms or 9.9 .9 pounds of Coral Pro salt. This is the only time you can add salt directly into the aquarium. Once your max is set up, always use another container, such as a plastic bucket, which is only used for the aquarium. When mixing salt water, always add the salt to the water, not the other way around, otherwise not all the salt will dissolve. Once the salt is settled, connect the max to the power supply. Turn on the lights, activate the two circulation pumps and the skimmer pump. Direct the two pump nozzle to create good water current. After 20 to 30 minutes of pump flow in your max, the salt should dissolve completely. When all the salt is dissolved, it's time to measure the temperature and salinity. In the max starter kit, you'll find a Red Sea hydrometer with a built-in digital thermometer. Before you put the hydrometer into the max, make sure the black plug is inserted into the outlet at the bottom. Submerge the hydrometer into the water until the water inlet is below the surface of the water. Jiggle the hydrometer around a bit to remove any bubbles that might have formed on the pointer as this will affect the accuracy of the reading. Read the specific gravity from the scale on the left and the temperature from the digital readout in the center. If the temperature of the water is below 25 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit, switch on the heater. You should aim for a salinity of 35 parts per thousand and a specific gravity reading of 0.026. Add water or salt as necessary to achieve the desired salinity. You should test the salinity and temperature of your aquarium every day for the first week of cycling and thereafter two to three times a week. The next thing you need to do is check that all the components of the Max are working correctly. You can find a full equipment checklist in the Max maintenance log, which you can download from the Max mini site under the support section. The most important check at this stage is the skimmer functioning. Check the skimmer chamber is full of bubbles. If it's not full of bubbles, make sure that the airline is unrestricted, is clear of blockages, and that the airline valve is open. 
You might also find the skimmer is over skimming. That's when it produces lots of watery foam, which might overflow into the collection cup. I'll talk more about skimmer adjustments and maintenance in the reef care section of this DVD. Although there are some marine hobbyists who prefer not to use a substrate, I recommend that you do use a substrate in the Max, preferably the Red Sea Reef Base, as it has proven so far to offer the highest rate of success. Reef Base, an aragonite based substrate, helps keep the water chemistry balanced. In an established tank, after the substrate matures in a few weeks of operation, it becomes live sand, inhabited by millions of microorganisms. Substrate provides a natural habitat for small worms and crustaceans that help keep the tank clean from detritus. Although the Red Sea Reef Base comes pre-washed, I recommend rinsing it again under running water before putting it in your aquarium, just to be sure. Once rinsed, spread the reef base evenly over the bottom of the tank. Once you've added some of the rock, you'll reach a recommended substrate depth of about five centimetres. The first water parameter you need to check once you've added your salt and substrate to the max are the pH and alkalinity. Let's start with pH. There are several reasons why monitoring the pH of a marine aquarium is important. All marine animals require a correct, stable pH in order to thrive. Even subtle changes in pH affect fundamental processes such as calcification, which is the formation of the coral's calcium carbonate skeletons. The pH should remain in the 8.2 to 8.4 range in a reef aquarium and 7.8 to 8.5 for marine or fish only setups. Remember to record the results of your test in your logbook. Alkalinity refers to the amount of acid required to drop the pH and indicates the stores of bicarbonate and carbonate in the water. Corals deplete alkalinity as they combine carbonate with calcium to form calcium carbonate skeletons. Calcification occurs more quickly at a higher alkalinity than natural seawater. So alkalinity must be tested regularly to prevent this level from dropping and affecting these processes. For these reasons, coral reef husbandry requires close attention to alkalinity. Supplementation is essential for maintaining alkalinity levels. You should maintain alkalinity in the ranges of 2.4 to 4.5 milliequivalents per litre, or 7 to 15 degrees carbonate hardness. If the level is too high, you may decrease calcium concentrations. If your alkalinity is low, you can raise it using Red Sea Reef Buff, which is included in the Max Starter Kit. Success Buff's unique formula of carbonate and bicarbonate effectively increases alkalinity to the desired levels. Once you've checked your alkalinity and pH, you can start by adding your live rock. Live rock are small pieces of stony reef rubble that have broken off naturally from their source. The main advantage of these porous rocks lies in their colonisation of large amounts of beneficial algae, bacteria, and other microorganisms like nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria, macroalgae, sponges, worms and other invertebrates. These organisms help maintain healthy water parameters and establish the natural food chains. As a general rule, the live rock should occupy at least 40% of your tank volume. The norm is to add 1 kilogram of rock per 10 litres, or 2.2 pounds per 2.5 gallons of tank volume. For the max, this means approximately 11 kilograms, or 24 pounds, of average density live rock. Wash all live rock in salt water and remove the greyish slimy areas, which harbours the decaying microorganisms. 
Place your live rock in the tank. Make sure that only small areas of the rock are in contact with the tank bottom substrate. Try and build as many caves as possible so that the larger rocks sit on the bottom and the smaller ones on top. It's important to build a stable structure and provide the live rock with good circulation with enough hiding places and shaded areas for shy nocturnal species. Make sure you're not blocking the pump's outlet or inlet to the filtration chamber. Direct the pump nozzles to produce good water movement throughout the tank, trying to create as much surface agitation as possible. Your live rock must be completely cured before you can add any fish or invertebrates to your max. The curing process typically takes one to four weeks, depending on the types of rock and the methods that you use. If the rock has not already been cured by your supplier, your ammonia or nitrite levels will rise up a week after introducing the live rock. During the curing process, new organisms grow on the rock, which break down the harmful substances released into the water. Although many organisms die during transport, much of the fauna survives. During the cycling period, the ammonia levels will rise rapidly as the bacteria processes the dead organisms. To boost the seeding of nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria, the MAC starter kit includes Red Sea Nitro Back. This specially designed formula contains a concentrated blend of nitrifying bacteria that quickens the nitrification process, reducing the cycling time of new aquariums by up to 60%. To learn more about cycling and the nitrification process, just refer to the MAX user manual and also to the quick reference setup charts, which you can download from the MAX website. The protein skimmer is a very important piece of equipment which is able to strip the aquarium of its organic waste. The way that it works is that the organic waste bonds to the surface of the bubble. As the bubble is propelled up, it is collected safely out of the water column by a collection cup. The clean water sinks to the bottom of the skimmer where it escapes back into the aquarium. Proper skimmer functioning should be among your chief concerns. Check the skimmer neck regularly to measure foam production. Adjust the airflow valve as required to get stable dry foam. When setting the skimmer, aim to have the yellow discoloured foam flowing into the collection cup and the white foam staying in the neck of the skimmer. As a general rule, opening the air valve produces more bubbles. Closing it produces less bubbles. Avoid opening the air valve all the way as it may cause the skimmer to over skim, producing lots of watery foam. Get into the habit of emptying the collection cup daily. For optimum conditions, you should keep your max at a stable water temperature in the ranges between 24 to 27 degrees Celsius or 76 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Slightly higher temperatures can be tolerated for short periods of time as long as the change in temperature is steady and not sudden. If the temperature falls below 24 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit, check the heater is operating. To do this, lift the skimmer cover and gently lift the heater to confirm the operational light is on. Turn the thermostat knob to raise the temperature by 2 degrees Celsius or 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait for one hour, then test the temperature again. If the temperature rises above 28 degrees Celsius 
or 82 degrees Fahrenheit for more than a day, monitor the temperature of the room over a 24-hour period. If the max is located in a closed room without sufficient ventilation, the ambient room temperature can slowly rise, causing a subsequent rise in the aquarium water temperature. If you're running your max in a room with a steady ambient temperature from 23 to 25 degrees Celsius, or 73 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, you can install the optional max cooling fan kit. This will keep your aquarium water below 27 degrees Celsius or 81 degrees Fahrenheit. The kit includes installation instructions which you can also download from the Max Mini site. If the ambient temperature is above 26 degrees Celsius, 78 degrees Fahrenheit, a chiller of at least one tenth horsepower should be used. To set up a water chiller, remove the cover from the chiller opening in the top frame. Position the chiller pump in the triangle shaped niche formed by the skimmer and the pump chamber wall. Position the return pipe from the chiller directly into the heater chamber or aquarium. The long-term success and health of the inhabitants of your Max Aquarium depend on you. Proper planning makes reef care easier to manage and quicker to perform, which leaves you more time for the real goal, enjoying your aquarium. After your aquarium has finished cycling, you can start to stock your max with fish and invertebrates. Refer to the quick reference setup chart, which you can download from the Max Mini site. It's important to find out the specific requirements of each fish you buy. Remember that some fish are harder to keep than others, so choose wisely. If you're not an experienced reef keeper, make sure that you only select fish that are easy to keep. Some of the species you see in this video are not suitable for beginners, so consult your local dealer carefully before choosing your livestock. There are two main types of marine aquariums, fish only and mini reef. A mini reef combines reef fish with reef invertebrates, such as anemones and corals. One of the great things about the Red Sea Max is that it allows you to create practically any underwater theme you wish. The Max's high spec filtration and lighting can support a wide range of bioloads. So whether you go for a fish only tank or a mini reef, a minimalistic setup or a more heavily stocked tank, you don't have to worry about the life support issues. To get a better idea of some of the themes you can create in your Max, the Max website features a number of different setup options, including details of livestock listings. Once you've decided which species you want to stock, you need to determine how many fish you can successfully keep in the max. While fish stock levels depend on many factors, I recommend that you stock no more than 35 centimeters or 14 inches of fully grown fish in your max. The most important aspect in choosing fish is their compatibility or their aggressiveness towards delicate invertebrates. Before you transfer any of the livestock to your aquarium, you have to test various water parameters. Test salinity, pH, nitrite, and ammonia. If all test results are normal, you can start by adding two small damselfish during week three of the cycle period. The next fish should be added in another four weeks time, no earlier. The water that holds the fish and invertebrates during packing has a different pH, temperature and salinity from that in your aquarium. 
so proper acclimatization is the key to their successful relocation. Place the fish, corals or invertebrates with all of the water from its bag into a bucket. Place the bucket on the floor next to the max. With some airline tubing and a flow valve, run a siphon drip line from the max to the bucket. Start a siphon and slowly allow the tank water to drip into the bucket. Continue with the drip method until the parameters in the bucket match those of the aquarium water. To reduce the risk of diseases, like white spot, allow at least one month between introducing each set of fish. Corals come from a range of different habitats and therefore require different physical conditions. Corals adapt well to different lighting, but some are more sensitive to change than others. Corals take time to adjust to new environments, though you can help this process along. If your corals come from mature reef aquariums, try to place them such that the new environment duplicates the original lighting and current as closely as possible. You will know when your coral has adjusted when it expands fully and its colours are vibrant. Continue to monitor the coral's adjustment to its new location. If it appears to shrink or its colours start to fade, relocate it to another position. With proper setup, patience and care, your Red Sea Max tank will thrive. As you might expect, the feeding and nutrition is one of the most important factors in keeping healthy aquarium inhabitants. Many attractive species, like butterfly fish and mandarin fish, are rarely found in aquaria, as they have special dietary requirements, difficult to meet outside of their natural environment. It's best to feed frequently in small quantities. Never let excess food accumulate and rot. Feeding with the Red Sea Max is easy. The front part of the hood folds back to allow foodstuffs to be added evenly across the complete width of the aquarium, allowing all of the inhabitants a chance to get at the food. The power centre makes it very convenient to switch off one or both of the circulation pumps and or the protein skimmer, should it be necessary during feeding. Corals get most of their energy from the light, but also require organic foods to provide them with enough energy. Red Sea Coral Grow is a complete balanced formulation that supplies all nutrients needed by marine invertebrates. The following parameters must be checked regularly. Check nitrate levels at least as often as you change the water. Check pH and alkalinity, especially when you use calcium additives regularly. The Red Sea Marine Lab, which is included in the Max Starter Kit, contains test kits for five essential elements. pH, alkalinity, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. It is important to note in your logbook when you purchase your test kits because they lose accuracy with age. As a general rule, replace your test kits every 18 months. Earlier in this DVD, I talked about pH and alkalinity tests. Let's look at other essential parameters you will need to check. It's extremely important to test your ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels regularly during cycling. 
you should be testing every two days during the first week of the cycling period and at least at the end of each subsequent week. Ammonia is highly toxic. In an established aquarium, the nitrifying bacteria rapidly convert the ammonia to nitrite. The Red Sea Nitro back will also help to reduce toxic ammonia. The nitrification process ends with the production of nitrate. To maintain low levels of nitrate, change 10 to 25% of the water weekly and also maintain a balanced feeding program. By the second week of cycling, test your calcium and phosphate levels. Corals primarily use calcium carbonate to form their skeletons. Most of the calcium comes from the surrounding water. As a result, aquaria with growing coral quickly consume available calcium. Therefore, aim to keep calcium levels between 380 and 450 parts per million. For optimum balance, use Red Sea Success Calcium Plus 3 and Success Buff together. For long-term calcium management, Red Sea Success Calc. Red Sea developed this superior alternative to Calquasa, calcium reactors, and calcium chloride supplements. Success Calc safely and simply replenishes the calcium and carbonate as the corals remove them from the water. The maintenance of your aquarium is divided up into daily, weekly and monthly checks. Now let's start with daily reef care. Daily reef care involves feeding your fish, topping up your tank with fresh water, inspecting all fish and corals, checking your temperature, checking your system is running and check surface agitation. Check the appearance of your fish and corals every day. Check the behaviour of each fish. Look for signs of aggression like bites or injuries, disease or missing livestock. It's critical that you remove all dead fish quickly or they will decay and pollute your tank. To achieve and maintain a successful reef aquarium, you've got to control the physical and chemical conditions of the reef environment. Now let's look at weekly reef care. Weekly reef care involves cleaning your mechanical filters, cleaning your protein skimmer, testing your water, adding supplements, removing algae off the glass, topping up your tank with fresh water, checking all your lights are working, checking your protein skimmers working, and then wipe down the outside of the hood and glass, as well as the transparent lens to get rid of any algae or salt crusts. To clean algae from the inside of the glass, use a sharp razor or cleaning magnet. Check the polyp extensions of your corals and look for signs of stress, such as polyps remaining closed for long periods of time, fading colours or losing tissue. If necessary, relocate the stressed coral to an area with better light and current. If all the corals show signs of stress, the cause is most likely your water parameters, particularly the pH or salinity. Now let's look at monthly reef care. Monthly reef care involves partial water changes, replacing the carbon, and checking the fan is working in the hood. Not everything in the max needs to be maintained so frequently. 
With time, calcium carbonate builds up on the pump motors. Remove this every six months by submerging each pump in a mixture of hot water and vinegar. Remember to switch off and disconnect each pump first. Over time, the intensity and spectrum of the fluorescent lamps in the MAX will decrease by as much as 50%, so you'll need to replace your tubes every six months. If you're not an experienced aquarist, it really helps to build a good relationship with your local, knowledgeable Red Sea supplier. Now that you've got the right equipment, remember that it's your responsibility to back this up with the right information, and to remember that the animals that you keep in your aquarium rely on you. So make sure that you get the right advice and that you give your new pets the attention that they deserve. Good luck and enjoy your Red Sea Max.